Anyway, it's officially time to start, so welcome guys. We are live from London, live from Rotherhithe. Um, if anyone was completely new to me, I'm Natalie. Uh, feel free to say hello uh, in the chat. Just a bit of housekeeping with, before we start. You've got the chat, feel free to use it, ask me any questions you might have. If the chat goes, goes a bit too quick for me, don't be, uh, don't be offended if I've missed any of your questions. If any of you were to use the super thanks, you know, the super chat, um, you know, you can give a little donation and then have uh, your comment highlighted. I'm not completely sure at the moment that I can actually see the highlight, the, the highlight on the third party app that, uh, that I'm using. So if, if you do uh, give me a super thanks and I don't see it, uh, I do apologize. I, I'm not ignoring you. It's just that I don't see it. And uh, let's go. So I'm just going to flip this camera around to show you the Thames River. So we are in, a, in an area called Rotherhithe. At some point it used to be called Redcliffe um, at the time of uh, um, Samuel Pepys, but at the moment we call it Rotherhithe, which is quite hard for me to say. Too many H's in, in, the, in one word. And um, as you can see, I'm in I'm on the, like the beach area because the tide is down. The Thames River is tidal, it goes up and down following the sea level. So at the moment it's, um, it's out, but not all the way out. It could be a little bit further down. And when the tide is really down, very often you see what, you call, well, what we call mudlarks. So those are people searching in the mud because you can still find uh, quite a few interesting items on the river shore. And let me show you what I just found, one of the most uh, common items to, to find in, in, the, in the river shores. Let me show you. I'll hold it in position so you can guess what it is. What is that? I'm sure some of you know because we've mentioned them in my tours before. Let me give you a better angle. Yes, exactly, a, a clay pipe tish. And for once I have a little bit of the, the beginning of the ball at the front. Focus camera, focus. So you can see where they used to, to rest it, so you can leave it on the table like this. Focus camera, focus. Ta -da. No, it doesn't want to focus. Um, so those clay pipes, they are not any, uh, they are not any valuable or anything. Um, there are a lot of them all over the riverfront. You can find anything here. You can also find flowers. I don't know what happened to those. Some lovers that were not actually that uh, in love. I don't know. And um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you the clay pipe because that's probably from the 16 or, or, uh, or the 1700s. And today we're going back into, uh, into the, the time of the 1600s because we'll talk about the Mayflower. So the Mayflower, we believe, uh, left from right here on Cumberland, Cumberland Raft and uh, in Rotherhithe. So the, uh, to, uh, to tell you the story about the Mayflower, we'll have to um, go back in time and, and uh, talk about religion a little bit. You'd have to remember that at the beginning of the 1600s, religion was not an option. It was not like today where you might be religious or you might not be. You, you had to go to church. And not only you had to go to church, but you, ha you had to go to your local church. You couldn't pick and choose. If you didn't go to your local church, you'd, you'd get fines, you know, penalties. Um, some of you might have been with me when we talked about Guy Fawkes last uh, November. You know, those Catholics that didn't go to their Protestant church, they used to pay massive, massive fines. Well, that would be the same with the, um, with the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the Puritans. So the Puritans, they were Protestant that believed that the Reformation had not gone far enough. We had already had the Reformation. So at the time of Henry VIII, you know, he broke up, famously broke up with the Catholic Church to create the, uh, the Church of England, to be able to grant himself a divorce. But really, um, some believe that the, uh, the, 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 the reformations were not, they didn't go far enough. Um, and uh, and uh, 
Some expected, oh, that's probably the lovers again, uh, some expected the, uh, the king, uh, James I at the time, he was the king on, on the throne, they would have expected him to be a little bit more tolerant in terms of religion, uh, Ailinda, because we'd have to remember that his mother um, uh, was, um, uh, she was a Catholic martyr, so you would have thought that, uh, sorry, that, don't worry, you're not on camera, my friend, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, so you would have expected um, James to be uh, uh, tolerant. He was not. Um, he, uh, he, he was actually quite, uh, quite strict. And the Puritans, they believed that they could deal straight with God. They, they did not believe that we needed those bishops and archbishops and uh, on head of the church. Um, the thing is, in this country, since Henry VIII, the head of the church, it is the monarch. Um, and so therefore, going against all those threats in the church, at the end of the day, it's kind of going against the monarch. So those Puritans were going to be in trouble anyway, and they felt uh, persecuted. Some of them became separatist, so they, they wanted to go, and they did go. In 1612, they actually left uh, to, go to, uh, to go to the Netherlands, Leiden. The Netherlands already at the time were a country uh, that was very uh, particularly tolerant in, term of, in terms of religion, but in terms of anything really. Still today, um, the, um, uh, still today. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see the resting place of Christopher Jones, uh, Suzanne, in a little while. Um, and uh, um, so, yeah, those, uh, those Puritans, they, um, I don't know if you saw what happened there. There was a gentleman that was a little bit worried about being on camera because he was smoking a very funny cigarette, uh, but I didn't put him on camera. Um, so, the, uh, so those... Uh, those um, the, the, those Puritans left. They went to Leiden in the, in the yeah. Netherlands, but they didn't speak Dutch and they, therefore they didn't get the best jobs. And their kids um, were growing up there and they became a bit too Dutch. They felt very much English themselves, you know, they didn't want their kids to grow up Dutch. And also the Puritans, all, also they wanted religious tolerance. They were not necessarily that tolerant themselves. And in the Netherlands, you had many different religions living together. So they wanted to go again. And they were approached by some of the merchants of the city of London to uh, maybe go to the New World. The, uh, the, the Mayflower voyage was, of course, a voyage for freedom, freedom of religion. And, and also, they were kind of dreaming about government by consent. Um, but it was also a commercial voyage. So those um, merchants from the city of London, they, 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 afford, they afford to give them a ship, the Mayflower. The, uh, the Puritans had already bought another ship, the Speedwell, that was going to leave uh, from, um, from uh, 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 the Netherlands and then was going to come and meet the Mayflower in, uh, in Southampton. And then the both ships would go, then eventually um, the, uh, the, 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 speed, the speedwell was meant to stay there and, um, and uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the, so the speedwell was meant to stay to go fishing, fishing in the new world and the, uh, the, the Mayflower was meant to come back. Uh, that, uh, that did not happen because uh, from day one the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the speedwell was actually leaking. Anyway, uh, let me, uh, I'll explain in a moment. Let me show you a statue. So that's one of the most famous of the, um, of the, of the, 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 uh, the Pilgrim Fathers. That is William Bradford. So this interesting statue here, it is a, a modern representation of the ghost, uh, the, the ghost of, um, of uh, Bradford is coming back and he's, uh, he's shocked by what America has become. So this is a uh, boy, he's meant to be from the, uh, from the 30s, and Bradford is up there. You might be able to see, he doesn't have a buckled hat. Uh, that's actually a myth. 
uh, the, 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 the Puritans, they had those tall hats, the, the Pilgrim's Fathers, but they did not have the, uh, the buckle hat that you often see in the, uh, in the history books. And uh, if you looked at the, so that's meant to be like a cartoon. Um, so the, the, the American boy with like America Today, you've got a lot of the symbols of America Today. You've got Mickey Mouse, you've got, um, that's a spaceship, cowboys, um, the Statue of Liberty, of course. There's even King Kong somewhere, but I cannot see King Kong. And the Mayflower is here. And on the other side, oops, we've got some more down here. The Mayflower again, and, and Mickey Mouse again. Oh, thank you, uh, Holchak. Thank you very much. I can actually, yeah, it's not highlighted. Uh, I, can see the, uh, I can see the tip, but it's not highlighted, so that's good to know. Thank you very much. And um, so, yes, yeah, so that's a, a representation of, of, of William Bradford. He's probably one of the most famous of the, um, of the, the Pilgrim Father because um, he became the governor of the, of the new colony. Um, and he also left a diary. So that's, uh, that's quite cool. That's, um, that's how we know such uh, uh, a massive amount of information about, uh, about the beginning of the, um, of the colony. And uh, so the voyage, they left. It was, a, it was a terrible idea to live at that time of the year. They left in the autumn. Everyone knew that they should have left in May or the beginning of spring. Living in the autumn was a, a very, very dangerous um, uh, adventure. There were 102 on the ship, um, but not, um, not all of them were Puritans. You had about 30 of them that were crew. Uh, a lot of the crew actually lived here. Um, and there were a few, um, uh, how did they call them, merchant adventurers. They were also called the strangers. They were people that went for the adventure. They went for the money because there was, there was a lot of fish. In, uh, in America, and there were a lot of furs as well, so they were going to come and, and, and sell some of the products. By the way, apologies, I was a bit distracted up there because there were some kids trying to get on camera. Well, not kids, like teenagers. And uh, um, YouTube doesn't really like kids. I mean, it, you know, the, we, you're not meant to have kids on camera, so I was very, fo very much focused on not having them in the frame. And they were full. Oh. So the, the voyage lasted 65 days. Well, when I did the research for that tour, it drove me crazy because um, uh, uh, on some of the sources it said 65, some of the other sources it said 66. And I was like, is it 65 or is it 66? You know, it's not the same. Um, and actually, it is because when they got to, uh, when they got to, the, to, to uh, um, Cape Cod, um, they got there on a, on a, on a Saturday late. And they, uh, they, did not, they, they were so religious that they wanted to pray the next morning. So they actually stayed on board. So it was then 60, 66 days. But it was a very long crossing because they were cramped all together. Each passenger had an area of, of approximately six foot by three and, uh, and, and no, no space to fully stand up because they were meant to be on two different ships, but the speedwell was, was gone out of the picture. So they were all cramped together on, on the Mayflower. And when they got, so when they arrived in, in Massachusetts, that's not where they were meant to arrive. They actually had a deal with the Virginia company. They were meant to arrive in Virginia, not, not Virginia today. What they called Virginia at the time was much larger. Uh, they, they were meant to arrive in the area of New York today. But, you know, they were so unwell on board. It's a bit like when you are in a car and you really want to vomit, you stop anywhere, right? Um, so so that's, uh, that's why they stopped there. And we have a beautiful mural here. So that's a, a mosaic and it represents uh, Rotherhithe. Let me show you from a bit closer. So we have a beautiful swan. And up there. So this is St. Mary's Church. We'll see the church in a moment. And the, uh, that's the, the Brunel Tunnel. We'll talk about the tunnel in a moment as well. Right. So 
back to uh, back to back to the, the the voyage. So then, when they um, when they finally arrived, um, the Mayflower was meant to come back, but it couldn't come back straight away because it took them about three months to build uh, to build a, a, a village. You know, so the baby the, the, the babies and um, the families were still on board. By the way, there were three ladies that were pregnant at the beginning of the crossing. One of, one of them gave, gave birth on board through the journey. And uh, do you care to guess or do you know how did they call the baby? How would you call your baby if it was born at sea? Let us know in the chat. I'm sure some of you remember because I've done that too before on a, on a different platform. Sea baby, Manati, exactly Mo, Oceanus, beautiful, what really, <laughs> um, beautiful name. Well, not beautiful, but um, personally, I, I wouldn't call my son Oceanus because it finishes by um, anus. Um, well, I suppose it's much, it's better than wet really. <laughs> We've got a lot of dirty name in the in the selection, um, but yeah. So the the baby was uh, 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 born on, on on ship, and for about three months, the kids and the ladies they they stayed on board. So there was nowhere the Mayflower was gonna come back come back to London quite yet. Anyway, they had seven years to pay back the debts. Um, and uh, that was not very successful. I mean, they were hoping to get a lot of fish and a lot of fur, and actually they were struggling from the, uh, from the very, uh, very first day. When they got there, the local uh, uh, community, the Wumpanoag, they had been ravaged by a plague. We're not too sure what exactly. For many years, we believed it was uh, smallpox that would have been brought by John Smith and his men uh, a few years earlier. Um, but actually, that's very much debatable. Apparently, there's a new theory that um, that uh, uh, um, some uh, it might be a completely different bacteria. So we still don't know. Anyway, we'll get back to the uh, we'll get back to the the the, the pilgrims uh, in a little while. For now, let me show you this amazing building. This is quite a classic example of what we call uh, facadism. It's, uh, um, it's a building that has kept the facade, probably because the building is what we call listed. It is protected. We've got, um, we've got to, uh, to keep it as it is. Um, and uh, they've rebuilt at the back. I believe this used to be a warehouse where they were um, storing timber. We used to have a lot of timber coming over here, some from uh, Scandinavia and some from Canada as well. That's why the station towards my back, it's, um, it's uh, called uh, Canada Water. Oh, your ex uh, lives right there. In, in that very building, Kurt? That's cool. But yeah, very uh, interesting, um, interesting facade. Oh, I can imagine the view if, uh, uh, if they were on the riverside. Uh, probably amazing views, yeah. So let's go and take a look at the Brunel Tunnel. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the Brunel, so we've got two Brunels. We've got Mark, uh, Mark uh, uh, Brunel, so Brunel Daddy, and Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Brunel Son. To avoid the confusion, I'm just going to say Brunel Daddy or Brunel Son, so, uh, so you know which I'm talking about. Uh, they were a family of amazing uh, engineers. The grandson was also in the trade. And uh, Brunel Daddy was actually a French um, refugee. He was... Uh, uh, very loyal to his king at the time when the French they started to believe that their kings and queens they looked a little bit better without a head so um, so that's that's why he had to exile and uh, I, and he ended up here uh, um, marrying uh, uh, an English lady so this is the Brunel Tunnel Museum uh, so you can come and visit and uh, and see the uh, what would have been at the time the beginning of the, um, the tunnel. And uh, the benches are in the shapes of, of some of the accomplishments from, uh, from the, the Brunel um, uh, uh, um, engineers. So this, I believe this is the, the Clifton uh, suspension bridge in, uh, in Bristol. And um, Brunel Sound also did a lot of uh, trains and he did all the train going from Paddington towards uh, 
uh, Bristol and all that. So that's why we've got the trains as well. Anyway, the tunnel, the Thames Tunnel. We had tried before. They tried twice to do a tunnel under the Thames um, and it was not successful. It failed both times. And um, the, uh, the um, oh, that's the Hungerford footbridge. Okay, so yeah, with the train, uh, uh, with the train as well. And um, the, um, the, what were you saying? Oh yeah, so the tunnel, it was, it was a crazy idea. They had never done any, um, any uh, uh, tunnel under navigable water like here. And Brunel Daddy believed he could do it. Uh, the Duke of Wellington was interested into the project because he thought, he thought it could be used for the, uh, the, the, the army as well. And um, Brunel Daddy, he had an interesting idea. He was looking at woodworms. Yes, you've heard this right, woodworms. You might wonder why. Because um, when you want to when you want to um, tunnel under uh, uh, under the river, oh, thank you, Cynthia. It's um, it's uh, um, complicated because of the risks of leaks. So he was looking at the woodworms. Let me show you a woodworm. So they when that when they tunnel through the wood, you see they've got this kind of little shield protecting their face. Well, that's what Brunel Daddy looked, looked at, and then he realized he could do the same with a tunneling machine. So he created an amazing tunneling machine with, uh, with, with that little shield that was in, inspired by woodworms. And you know what? The tunneling machine they used uh, when they did the new uh, tunnel under the river for the, the Elizabeth Line, it's basically the same system, obviously a much newer version, but it's still the same system that... Um, uh, uh, Brunel Daddy had uh, invented and that was very very dangerous work because not only you could um, you could drown um, you know you might have the risk of leaks and you could drown actually there was a massive leak at, at some point um, some of the workers lost their lives um, Brunel's son actually nearly died and when he was in hospital that's when he heard about a little uh, competition for the Clifton uh, uh, suspension bridge and um, they ran out of money to, uh, to finish the, the tunnel so what they did they decided to open it for tourists it was not finished and it was extremely dangerous anyway. Uh, that would drive in health and safety inspectors crazy today. Not only was it dangerous because of, uh, you could drown, but also because the water, the Thames water at the time, we, we are before um, Joseph Bazalgette and the sewage system and all that. So the, the, the water was absolutely disgusting. It was full of, um, well, human waste. And not only was it full of bacteria, you could swallow it and catch a, a terrible illness, but it was also a risk of explosion. Because human waste, you, you know, when it putrefies, it creates methane, the, the, the gas. And of course, we are before electricity. So they, they used to have those oil lamps or those gas lamps. So you also had the risk of explosion. Yet, six to 800 people a day were going down the tunnel. They'll pay a shilling. So that way, they'll, uh, they'll uh, bring some more money into the project. But, you know, why not? You know, it was before Netflix, before YouTube. Why not on a, on a Sunday or on a day out going into a crap infested, dangerous tunnel for a shilling? You know, they didn't have much else to do. And when finally the, the, project, the, the project was completed, they, because they didn't have enough money to do the approaches, you know, they wanted some ramps so people could go down with their horses to bring some goods and, and, and uh, transport some, some cargo. But they didn't have money to do that. So you'd have to have only pedestrians. And therefore, it became a bit of a touristic attraction. Uh, you had a lot of little vendors inside and ladies of the night, homelesses as well, because it was open 24-7. Killed by a fart, yes, exactly, lethargy. And um, actually, one day, Queen Victoria came down, unannounced, apparently. She just wanted to see the tunnel. And um, there was a guy down there that was selling handkerchief. Um, and he, you know, the, it was a bit wet, so they did not want the Queen to step into a puddle. So the guy laid down all his handkerchief on the floor to be nice to the Queen so she doesn't get her feet wet. 
Yeah, right. It's actually because he knew that after the Queen left, he could, he could sell them for premium price. So that's exactly what he did, and apparently made a bit of money by selling those handkerchiefs on which, on which the Queen stepped. Anyway, we've got one of those, um, see up there, that's where they would have um, transported the barrels up there. Today it's more used like a, like a balcony, um, but it's, uh, that's where they would have rolled all, all those barrels full of wine or, 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 or gunpowder even. Guy Fox, that's where he bought his gunpowder from, here in Rotherhithe. So all those buildings used to be uh, warehouses. And the, uh, uh, the little pub here, this is the famous Mayflower Cut! pub. Um, oh my God, people are really uh, wanting to be on camera tonight. Uh, that was in purpose, by the way. Uh, the gentleman was trying to the stream. Um, so, the, uh, the Mayflower here, amazing uh, little pub. Um, they, are, they have a little book inside. If you, uh, if you can claim, thank you, Pisas, if you can claim to be a, a, um, a descendant, apparently today it's uh, 35 million people, but if you are a straight descendant, if you looked into your genealogy and you are a descendant of any of the, the pilgrim uh, fathers, apparently out of the 102 um, uh, passengers, only 51 of them had kids, but still quite a few Americans today can claim a, a straight uh, lineage. So if you did come to London, if you were a descendant of those uh, Pilgrim Fathers, you could come in and sign the book. They have a little book inside. And some claim that um, the boat itself, the Mayflower, eventually it came back um, and it started to rot in the mud here. It was not a new ship. So some claim that uh, when it was dismantled, some of the wood was used uh, to, uh, to build the pub. It's very much debatable. It could, it could be true, uh, or it could be just uh, a marketing. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely little pub inside. So if you, if you did visit London, do come and, and, and check it out. The Mayflower boat, uh, as you said, it was a new, it was actually, it, it, um, Christopher Jones had um, 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 used it for a while. It used to be into the wine trade. So the boat itself used to go down to uh, La Rochelle in France or Bordeaux and come back fully loaded with wines. And um, when Christopher Jones came back from the New World, he then went back into that trade for about a year and, and then sadly he, he passed away. This is um, uh, St. Mary of, of Rotherhithe, and that's where Christopher Jones used to, to worship. Christopher Jones, we do not really know his uh, motivations, probably just uh, uh, commercial. Um, the, 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 the director here at, at St. Mary's, he, he had the reputation to be a little bit on the Puritan side, so Christopher Jones could have agreed with that um, ideology and that those, those, those principles. But as far as we know, his, his, uh, his motivations were more uh, commercial. It was not, uh, he was not really a, a Puritan himself. And uh, um, the church itself, it's quite old. Apparently they, uh, they did find some Roman stones under, underneath. So it might have been a, a place of worship for a very long time. And because we have a church, what do we have? A graveyard. And because we have a graveyard, what do we have? Dead people. Now we might have had some body snatchers. Um, it wouldn't be a Natalie tour if I didn't tell you about cadavers, right? So um, let's, go, uh, let's go and see a little uh, uh, watch house. Oh yeah, so there's a claim. Uh, yeah, there, there's a claim that it was used to uh, to to build uh, the Mayflower. I'd like to know if that was true, but we don't know. Yes, dead body, Janie. So we've got a little building here um, called the Watch House because that used to be a watch house. So the watch houses, they were those. Those, those, peop those buildings with the night watch before the creation of the Metropolitan Police in 1829. So the watchmen, 
Actually, you had two types of watchmen. You had some that were dressed in yellow and they were very loud. So they were more like a deterrent. And you had some with dark blue that were more hidden. So they'll wait for you to commit your dark deeds. And some say that this is probably still why the, um, the, 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 the police today, the Met Police, they were dark blue. Uh, who knows? And yes, exactly, Janie, they were watching for body snatchers. So for the ones that don't know, if you've never been to my tours before, the body snatchers, they were those people stealing the newly buried bodies to sell them to the anatomist um, the, for the dissections. Because at the time, the only bodies that were given to, to science, really, were the bodies from the executions. There were some, but they were not enough. So that's why uh, there was a massive demand for human bodies. So there were quite a few body snatchers around here because we're quite close to Guy's Hospital uh, in, uh, in London Bridge. And this little green here used to be a, a graveyard as well. Let me push the gate. And the building to the back, that was the mortuary. That's where you'd come and you'd bring your dead bodies if you found any dead bodies anywhere, um, especially on the River Thames. Um, on average, there were at the time about one body a week found in the river. Well, sadly, uh, it's still the average today, apparently. Um, and it was at the time uh, the, um, the uh, um, uh, you know, um, if you brought a body to the, to the mortuary here, you'd get a bit of money. Well, first, you could empty their pockets. And then you could um, you can get a bit of money from the mortuary and eventually from the family as well if the if the victim was then uh, recognized. If you know your Dickens, you might remember at the beginning of um, um, uh, our mutual friends, there are two scavengers on the river looking for dead bodies. It was sadly it was a way some people tried to make a living uh, finding dead bodies and bringing them to the mortuary. Yeah, a body a week, Cynthia, I think that's in the full length of the Thames, uh, probably not in London, uh, so it's quite a long river, so although it is really bad, it's probably not as bad as it sounds. And this little uh, warehouse here, that was for all the goods that did not pay their taxes. So if you came and you didn't have the money to pay the taxes for your cargo, they would be rotting in there until, uh, until you paid. And uh, wharf, by the way, it's an old uh, uh, English term. Um, do not let anyone tell you that it stands for warehouses along the riverfront. That's not true. Wharf, it's, it's, a, it's a term uh, uh, on its own. Gaffer Hexman was the waterman's escort. Cool. Yeah, I don't think I've, I don't even remember reading our mutual friends. Maybe, I don't, uh, I don't know if I did. I don't even know if I've watched it on any... Uh, um, most of my Dickens have actually watched uh, the BBC version because they've done some good... Uh, uh, most of them have some good uh, um, series on the BBC, but I don't think I've... I don't think I've ever read our mutual friend. Anyway, let's go and see the little monument that we have for... Um, for uh, uh, Christopher Jones. So we don't know the exact spot where he was buried, but um, um, that's, uh, that's the monument they've done for him here. So the, you know, the, the, the Puritans, when they, when they finally arrived and they settled in, uh, in New England, they were then um, helped by the Wumpanoag. Because the Wumpanoag, as we said earlier, they had been uh, decimated by a plague. Um, and apparently it was very bad. And when they got there, you, they found some dead bodies on the beach and all that, because it was so bad that the Wumpanoag did not have time to, to, to deal with their dead, you know. And the Wumpanoag were then in a position of weakness with the other, um, the other uh, uh, clans. So that's why for them, it was actually maybe a good thing to help those, um, those uh, 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 English settlers and, and, uh, and to, to, to maybe have an ally. And they, they showed them how to grow the corpse. Well, originally the, the, the pilgrims, they found some, uh, some um, uh, grains that belonged to the Wumpanoag to, to plant them. 
And there was indeed a dinner. That is, that is true. Once they had those crops, those, those crops, <laughs> not crops, uh, they, uh, there was a, a dinner with the, the, the pilgrims and the, um, and, uh, the Wumpanoag. And that, of course, led to, uh, led to uh, Thanksgiving. So that's a little plug there for the, the links between the church and, and the, the Mayflower. So Thanksgiving, they would not have had turkey at the time. For the, for the local, uh, uh, the Native Americans, turkey was like starvation food. So they would have had maybe deer or, 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 or seafood, like uh, lobsters and stuff like that, but probably not uh, turkey. And, uh, and it probably wasn't a massive dinner either, but yeah. Anyway, completely unrelated to the, uh, to the subject of the pilgrims, this little grave here, it's got a um, story. This is Prince Libu. He's also known as the Black Prince because of his uh, skin color. Prince Libu was the son of a chief on the, um, uh, the, the Pilu Island, uh, Palau Island. They've kind of changed their names. It's, it's off of the Philippines in the, in the Pacific. And the, um, the, uh, um, the, the East India Company, they lost a ship there. There was a shipwreck and all the, the, the British sailors ended up on the island for a few weeks or even a few months rebuilding their ship. And Prince Libu, he was fascinated by those English uh, sailors. And once the ship was built, uh, the, the little prince asked his dad, if he, can, if he could come with those, those English sailors to England. At the time, you, you'd have to imagine it was a, a, a massive trip. We are in the 1700s. And his dad said, yes. We have a, a little slide here, by the way. That's quite unusual to have a slide in a graveyard and you end up right at the bottom of the graves. So yeah, his dad, uh, his dad said yes. And uh, he, came to, uh, he came with the, the, the captain. He stayed here in Rotherhithe. He, um, he went to school. I didn't, I didn't even show you the school, did I? So we've got, um, we've got a, a, a charity school here that was created for the sons and, and daughters of the, the sailors there, uh, the building straight ahead. And um, Prince Libu literally um, charmed uh, society. Uh, everyone was uh, 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 very much uh, curious and they, they loved that little prince. But very sadly, he, um, he, uh, uh, he lost his life. We, we think it's, it was a uh, smallpox as well. Again, for, for him, uh, uh, a disease that was not very much uh, known. I mean, for their immune system, you know, they were not used to it. So for them, it was... Uh, you know, for Europeans, it was like benign, but for, for um, uh, people from, from abroad, for, from those um, new territories, uh, that they were not used to those bacteria yet, and it could be fatal, very sadly. So that's why he was buried here. And very sadly, his family did not hear about his passing for, uh, f for a few years, really. Um, so yeah, that was Prince Libu for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight down, just so you know, down that lovely little street here, I'm gonna try not to say anything too interesting because sometimes I lose a bit of the signal. So I know what it's like when, you know, you, the sound cuts and you feel like you've missed some, uh, some information. So until the end of the street, uh, just uh, chit chat, nothing, uh, nothing of interest. <laughs> this way you don't miss anything if the sound, uh, if the sound goes a bit funny. Only on this island for six months. Yeah, that's that's sad. I think he was only twenty uh, when he uh, uh, when he passed away. So again, you can see those used to be warehouses with the uh, the little the little platforms to roll the to roll the um, the barrels. At the time, you would have used barrels to store anything really. Barrels everywhere. I just dropped. Okay, we should be back now. Hopefully, let us know. Oh, you did lose me. Okay, good, good. I hope we are all back. Are we all good with the sound?
But no, perfect, lovely. So we are now back on the riverside. And don't worry, you've not missed anything. I didn't say anything interesting down that street because I know it sometimes happens. So, uh, so you've not missed uh, any information, I don't think. On that street that we've just crossed, apparently at some point, um, uh, Tony Armstrong, you know, Princess Margaret's uh, uh, husband, uh, apparently lived there at some point. Yeah, that's a, an amazing view. That's why I scheduled the tour at that time, because I love the light of the, the Tower Bridge when you still have a, a, a bit of natural light as well. And uh, we'll follow the river. And on the other side of the river, uh, that's where you had execution docks. So, you know, London was a very busy port. It's not that obvious today because the port of London has moved in the 60s, you know, when we invented those uh, shipping containers. So the port of London is now much closer to the estuary. But um, historically, London has always been a very busy port. And um, we used to have a lot of cargo, very valuable goods, you know, tea, rum, sugar, tobacco, uh, you name it. So you had those um, boats with a lot of expensive cargo waiting to be unloaded in the docks. So you had those people jumping on boats to steal some of that cargo. We call them pirates, of course. I know when I say pirates, you probably imagine pirates of the Caribbean, uh, but technically anyone stealing from a boat is a pirate. And the, the punishment for piracy was the capital punishment. That makes you want to drive into London, you should. Are you in Norwich, I think? Yeah, you're not far, you should. <laughs> so the, um, the, the, the pirates, they were hanged, but the pirates, they were dealt with by the Admiralty. The Admiralty did not have any, uh, any Captain Hook, uh, the Admiralty did not have any land. So they, um, they dealt with the pirates at sea or whatever was closer to the sea, the Thames River. So they used to wait for the tide to be out and right across the river there at execution docks, they would hang the pirates and they would leave them there hanging, dead. Because they wanted, to, they wanted the tide to metaphorically wash their bodies away from their sins. And uh, three tides they waited usually. So those bodies, those dead pirates, they used to get a little bit bloated. We called them whoppers. So that's why the area across the river there is called Wapping, because of those bloated pirates. And uh, the area where I'm now, it would have been very busy on execution days, because some people would be watching. Some people would be on this side with a telescope or to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to get a bit closer. And... Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, the public executions, they were always a very popular event. <laughs> and the, the most notorious pirates, they were um, shaven everywhere, coated in tar, or sometimes even boiled and salted, and they would be placed in a gibbet. A gibbet was like a metal cage in, in which they would place the dead bodies as a, a deterrent to... Um, to, uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to stop people from committing piracy. But it did not work. What really worked... The, we should go back to Canary Wharf so, soon. And yeah, it's beautiful at this, um, at this time. Boiled and salted, Cynthia is saying. Well, yeah, you know, you know uh, usually they use tar, but they would also use salt to preserve them a bit longer. Yeah. I wouldn't want that as, as a job. Uh, but, you know, it was somebody's job. Let me show you. I'll show you a, a little uh, a sculpture here. I don't know why it's here. It's been here for years. Someone has just impaled a lot of... Um, the, the stick here. So this is uh, recycled art, I suppose you can say. <laughs> and uh, let me show you something else. There, I know many things, but there's also a few things I don't know. If any of you know, <laughs> we have a fireplace here, outside. 
I don't know why. I'm guessing the building next to it was maybe destroyed or bombed. Or, um, but yeah, there's a fireplace and a, you can see the, the chimney quite clearly. So uh, I'm guessing there used to be a building here before. But, um, rum bottles from the pirates. Oh, I think they're more modern bottles. <laughs> so yeah, if anybody knows why we have a fireplace here, do let me know. Kurt, if you know. Uh, and CCTV in operation. I doubt it. Usually they say there's a CCTV, that's when there's no CCTV. <laughs> I think this building here, that used to, uh, that used to be the bargeman um, that... Uh... Oh, hold on, Kurt has an answer. Original, original part of a row of wooden tenement. Oh, the blitz, yeah, it has been, uh, uh, it has been bombed quite a lot. Okay. Cool. Well, that's probably, uh, that's, uh, that was uh, one of my guesses, so yeah. <laughs> and let's go and take a look at a lovely pub here. By the way, it is from here that a famous uh, uh, um, painting was uh, painted. Let me show you. Oh, there was a little doggy. Let me show you. It's called Fighting Temerer. I'm sure you might have seen it before. There we go. And uh, so apparently it was, fil it was f not filmed, painted from right here. And some of you might look at the painting and be like, I've seen that before. Well, you could have seen it in the National Gallery or you could have, sh have seen it on the 20 pounds note. See behind Turner, that's the, that's the fighting Temera there in the, in the background. Yes, it's known as the Leaning Tower, yeah, the, the building we've just seen. And there we go. So that's the Angel. That's uh, it's a quite old pub. Well, this one, this building in particular, I think it's Victorian, but the pub was here way, way before that. And uh, it is said that they had those little, uh, uh, those little, uh, like the priest holes, you know, but they used to use it to hide some of the goods, you know, smuggle some of the goods that, um, that did not pay their taxes. I'm always being careful when I say that now because some of you might remember the very first time I did this tour, I was to the, where I am now talking about the pub and I said, oh, there used to be smugglers. And then there's this guy, dead serious, drunk, clearly intoxicated, that came to me shouting at me, you tell you people, yeah, you tell you people on YouTube, I'm not a smuggler. And at first I thought he was kidding, but no, he was dead serious. So I had to tell people, I was not even on YouTube at the time, I had to tell people, this gentleman is not a smuggler. <laughs> but I was talking about 400 years earlier. Um, anyway, we have a last little, uh, a very sad story actually before we go. Oh, it's very busy here tonight. Um, it is the story of Dr. Salter, Alfred Salter. We'll see a, st a statue here. Uh, sorry, there we go. So there is, um, there is Alfred. I'm just gonna try not to put anyone on camera. So that's Dr. Salter here, and um, he was uh, so he was a doctor active at uh, mainly at the beginning of the, the 20th century. He um, uh, he had some money, but he chose to live here in Bermondsey. This is his wife here, Ada. Um, the uh, Bermondsey, you'd have to know at the time, was, was a, a proper slum. Sometimes it, it, it was uh, flooding, you know, before the Times Barrier. Sometimes it would, uh, it, would, it would be a bit flooded and it was full of um, epidemics and, and poverty. That's the cat, so that's uh, Dr. Salter's uh, uh, cat. And um, he had a daughter, Joyce. Joyce is here. Um, and. Um, they lived in Bermondsey and uh, he was treating people whether, I'm sorry it's a bit dark to show you Joyce, but there she is. Um, he was treating people whether they could pay or not. So we are before the creation, the creation of the NHS and the free health system. So people had to pay, but Dr. Salter would actually um, treat them whether they could pay or not, uh, they, they would be treated. And very sadly, uh, little Joyce here, she caught uh, Scar Scarletina, Scarlet Fever, and she died at the age of eight. Now, 
Dr. Salter and Ada, they had some money. They could have lived in, you know, Chelsea or, or, or anywhere else. Uh, Joyce is creepy. I think it's because it's dark. I don't think she looks creepy at that time. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, if they had lived elsewhere, uh, little Joyce probably would not have had Scarlett in now, and she probably wouldn't have died. But yet they've decided to stay here. They've decided to stay in Bermondsey and help. Um, and uh, uh, the statue, actually, let me show you what it used to look like. Dr. Salters used to wave as he, at, at, at his little girl. You might see he's, he's looking a bit older. He's actually waving as, he, as he's waving to the ghost of Joyce because um, he's represented a bit older, like she was already passed. But you might have noticed, I'm sorry, it's a bit dark, so it's hard to see, but he's not waving on this one here. He's holding his cane. When here he's waving. Why? Well, would you believe the statue was actually stolen? Probably to melt the bronze. Um, we never found the statue again. Ada at the time was not here. Um, they, there was only Dr. Salter, Joyce and the cat. They had to put Joyce and the cat in a storage for a little while for their own safety. And eventually they, they offered a reward of a thousand pounds to whoever would bring Dr. Salters back, but nobody did. I don't know how much money you can make with that little piece of bronze, but yeah, that's quite sad. And um, they did ask, uh, they, they asked for a coat to redo uh, Dr. Salters. And the artist, um, uh, Diane Gorvin, I think her name was, she, um, she, uh, um, oh, Judy Dench went to, uh, so Kurt is saying that a blue plaque was unveiled for Ada uh, um, by Judy Dench. That's good. As well. So now you have the full family. You've got Ada, Joyce, uh, uh, the cat, and Dr. Salters. And you can see one of those, uh, one of those, um, is that the Uber boat? Yes, that's the Uber boat. She was born in York. Nice. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the tour. Let me show you my face again. And uh, let me know, let me go back in the light. It's quite, uh, quite dark around here. Let me know if you have any questions for me before we go. If not, thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, it's amazing to have you on board. Yes, there's a lovely little, uh, like a, a rose garden into Suffolk Park. It's quite hidden. If you don't know it's there, because it's, well, it's not my local park. I live in Camberwell, but I don't live far. Uh, but I've only discovered it fairly, uh, fairly recently. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Sandra. If you guys wanted to see a bit more of me, on Sunday night, we're heading to uh, Mayfair and, uh, on the Monopoly board. Uh, so that's a late one. It's 10 p.m. UK time, so that's quite good for the, 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 the few of you that are on the other side of the pond. And um, Guildford on Tuesday. So we're going to, uh, we're going to see uh, um, Louis Corral's resting place, and then we'll do the dark tales of Guildford. So that's uh, Tuesday. If you wanted to make sure you don't miss out on the fun next time, make sure you subscribe to, to my channel because um, YouTube is not amazing at, at promoting the lives. You know, it's not like if we had any uh, uh, calendar or any list of the lives uh, that day. So the best way to make sure you don't miss them is to subscribe. Or if you go into my live section, you can also click the notify me button on each of the lives. This way you'll get a little uh, notification whenever I go. I start the tour. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Tanzian. And if any of you left me a, a, a little tip, buy, uh, buy me a coffee or, or PayPal. Um, I cannot thank you live because I don't see them in the chat, but uh, make sure you know you're very much, uh, very much appreciated. Uh, that. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully I'll see some of you on Sunday night. There's going to be a few dark stories as well. So if you're not into the monopolies, but you are into your dark story, do come. Hi, Islam. I was just saying bye bye, but nice to have you along. Come back on Sunday. 
So Linda, that's that's a good question. Um, to be honest, I will say uh, do whatever do whatever you'd like. I pay a bit more commission if you tip on YouTube because Google is going to take about thirty percent. But in a way, I think it probably helps the algorithm because in a way, it's the best form of engagement. So if you prefer to do it on YouTube, I, I don't mind. And between buy me a coffee on PayPal, it's it's about the same really. Um, it's probably a little bit. So I don't need. And so yeah, buy me a coffee, PayPal. Uh, uh, whatever to give you an it's a, it's actually quite hard because they're all hiding their fees but i would say buy me a coffee and paypal it, it they take off about 15 percent um it's not straight fees but it's like five percent plus another conversion plus another this and that and uh on, on google should take about 30 percent but it might help the algorithm so it might help more people discovering the, the channel. So whatever you're most uh, comfortable with, uh, anything, anything really helps. And if you cannot tip but you want to help, um, YouTube is a platform that very much works with engagement. So any comments, likes, shares, that, uh, that, that always helps as well. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks everyone for... Uh, for uh, <laughs> Buy me a gibbet. <laughs> so thanks everyone for uh, for coming tonight. Hopefully I'll see some of you on Sunday, and uh, if not, uh, keep uh, keep you to being, and I'll probably see you uh, Tuesday. Have a good evening, a good morning, whatever time it is for you.